Today we visited a Stroker genus Alpalcas in Stringer, Mississippi. One thing we learned is that alpacas have no upper teeth, so it tickles when they eat out of your hand. Some of the alpacas were not interested in having their picture taken, while others were happy to strike a smile for their moment of fame. We all had a great time. The only time the kids were not happy was when they were asked to hold still long enough for a picture. After we had the chance to learn a bit about the alpacas and give them some feed, we learned about the fiber that is harvested from them. So when, when we breed, we use the fiber. We don't breed for uh, selling the animals again. We use, it, we, we use it for this. What we look for is how well the fiber locks up. That's the second cut. This is a lock of fiber. He's not very good at locking up. But usually it'll be all bundled together. And then when you look at it, like in the 80s, we're looking for crib. So if you want to ha pass that around, that's a perfect fit to see the crib. The more crib the animal has, the better. So we look for bundling, and we look for crib. And then the other thing we look for, you can pass that around, that's hard to show without being on the animal is spider webs. So when we pull it apart, we want all of those little pieces to stay together. So the more of those three things that you have, that's the higher grade of fleece. Usually white is the best, and then as you get darker in color, it gets more and more coarse. But even coarse, dark alpaca hair is softer than wool any day. And it really is soft. I would describe it as feathery. Next, we learned about some of the processing that is involved. The fibers are fluffed, then put through a carding machine, dyed, and then spun. So I'm taking our fiber, this machine is called a carter, and what it does is it has two drums with little pins, and don't worry if you can't see because I'll do it again. It has two drums with little pins, and it makes it so all the fibers go in the same direction. So it's taking this in, it goes from one drum to the other, and we fluff, we fluff it up before we put it in there. They sell combs for that. If you ever see like, um, what do they call them? Combs and hackles, they call them. And they, that's what they do, is just what I'm doing. But we figured we can do it by our hands. You might have a special tool. All the bats. And you can touch it, but we're not going to pass this one around because I don't want it to fall apart. It's even softer than the raw fiber because all the fibers are going in the same direction. So from there, it's ready for spinning or wet felting, or needle felting. Straight dye. So you can dye Come here. with a whole bunch of different stuff. So this is how we spin. This is called grafting. What I'm doing with my left hand, I am pulling it out to the thickness that I want to be able to spin. Apparently you can dye the fibers with just about anything, including Easter egg coloring. Next, we made alpaca soap, which, before we came, I thought was going to be made from their milk, much like goat soap. Instead, the fiber is used to make a covering for the soap, which makes the soap last a long, long time, and, as you'll see, it still lathers up really well. They had the fiber already wrapped around the bar of soap for us. Then the bar and fiber were dipped in a solution of water and dish soap. The fiber was then worked around the soap until it started to mat down and was finished off by rubbing it against the rough surface of these mini paint rolling trays. We also were able to meet their newest great Pyrenees. They already have two working with the alpacas and these ones will join them when they are ready. We went to a stroke of genus alpacas with members of the local area Parent Educators and Kids or PEAK Homeschool Network. There was a pretty good showing and everyone was extremely friendly and hospitable. Remember to keep smiling and please take a moment to like, comment, share, and subscribe.